Wow. Oh, <laughs> I think we're live. No, never. There was not a five, four, three, two, one. Good evening. Good evening, <laughs> everyone. About that. We normally get a little countdown. When we do, do we normally practices. have five, four, three, two, so one? Apologies, well, for, apologies for looking at you like yeah. this and going, hello. <laughs> anyway, well, good, evening. Go. good evening, good evening, good evening. Good evening. And welcome to the very first Friday Night Gin with York Gin. Live, as you can tell. Cheers. My name is Susanna and this hello, is my I'm partner Joe. in crime, Joe. Hi, Joe. Hey. Joe, how are you doing? What have you got? What are you drinking? Well, I've got a, I've got a grey lady. I'm normally with Val Illingworth on this one. I normally like an old Tom. It's my favourite. Everybody, you're going to, well, but I'm I've gonna, run out. Well, I'm actually just going to have a York Gin classic at the moment. I'm a I'm classic doing, sort of girl, and you're a York Gin. Lady. Well, good evening, everyone. So, what's going to happen yeah. tonight? As I just pour myself an enormous gin, is that yeah, we're ditto not, with lots we're of big ice cubes in a in a copper. In a copper glass. We're just going to wait a couple of minutes and make sure everyone's joined us. I'll just pour a little bit of tonic in there. Yeah, we were actually, well, we were actually on uh, Chris Evans' um, breakfast show the other day because he didn't know what one of these was called. So ah, I told ooh. him. So, yes, you'll find it's called a copper, Chris. So he That's promised to try and join us tonight for a quick g and a virtual g and Well, I'm just going to put some good quality tonic and some lemon in mine. What have you got in yours? Uh, um, just the tonic tonight. I'm, I'm, I'm going, going very simple to tonight. Simple. Whoa, that was a stiff one I brought there. I think I might need some more tonic because we'll never get through this. Oh, quiz. I have to say, as you know, I do like Grey Lady as a shop personally. So, in fact, dear listeners, you will find later on this evening that Joe likes most things as a shop. Yes, it's a bit of a theme. <laughs> Well, our oh, gins are that good. Absolutely. So what's going to happen tonight, everyone, is that we're just going to wait a couple of minutes and make sure everyone's with us. Then we're going to start the quiz. The quiz has uh, three rounds, and then there's a bonus question right at the end. Um, the first round is all about the history of gin um, and a few cocktails thrown in there. The second round is all about York gin itself. There are only four questions. You will know the answer. And the last round is the sort of gin quotes, aren't they, Joe? Yeah, quotes. Famous people who have uh, obviously been fans of gin or have included gin in their works or whatever, yes. Exactly. So you'll, probably exactly. Know, you'll probably know quite a few of these, I'm sure. I know you will. So unfortunately, our beautiful shop in the centre of York is closed at the moment, which is really sad. And Joe and I both work there. Um, and we're missing it a lot because it's a real team here at York Gin. Um, we're all like a big family. I know people say that, but actually we really are. And we love working for York Gin. We definitely. do. Top people, top product. Absolutely, absolutely. And as we say at York Gym, we are history in the tasting. That's our yeah. motto. That's how we say things. Yes, uh, we've yes. Very, very into five. the history, is Emma. We've got five different gins to talk about, and we'll we'll sort of interlace them as we go along. So, Joe, what were you drinking again? Was it Grey Lady? Yeah, I was drinking Grey Lady, which mm -hmm. is the one we made for um, the local theatre, the Theatre Royal, the York Theatre Royal, who have um, a ghost there called the, the Grey Lady who appears during particularly fine performances. Ooh. So everybody longs. Her. Yeah, so it, it was done, it was done as a as a limited edition, but it was so popular we've we've actually brought it into our main stable now. It's going well, isn't it? Yeah, but it's yeah, the yeah. only one. It doesn't have a medal. Oh, why is that? It, well, only because it was it's never been entered in a competition. We know that when she is, oh, she'll yes. win them. She's they have all won many many medals. So our Georgian classic that I'm drinking this evening uh, was basically described as perfect. And I, I don't need to say anything more than that, do I really? So in the Great Taste Awards, it was awarded two stars. And perfect is pretty good going. Yeah, did it? it got 98% or something ridiculous, didn't it? Something like that, yes. Yeah. So this evening's quiz is just for fun. Please don't get overexcited with the questions. We've done our research. We've tried to make everything as clear as we can. There is no <laughs> charge. Obviously, it's free. As you probably saw right at the beginning, um, uh, we do have a link on our page to St. Leonard's Hospice. Uh, if you want to give anything, that's completely down to you. Obviously, charities at this time are having a really tough time. And if you can give anything, we'd, we'd really be very grateful. And, of course, there is a prize. Oh, yes, indeed. There yes. will be a prize. Obviously, we can't see your answers, so we don't know what you're writing, and if you're cheating <laughs> or not. So we're going to randomly choose one choose one from the, the messages at the side there. Literally, it will just be a, like a pin in the pin in the 
page kind of thing. Sure. Yeah, and that, and the, oh, oh. I remembered was also we're going to if you stay with us right to the end, we're also going to flash up a, a discount code. Oh, like a we, discount. We all like a discount, Joe. So that can <laughs> give us ten percent off um, any of the York Gin products on www.yorkgin.com, yeah. um, and that's just for this week. And if you live in the beautiful city of York, and why wouldn't you? Because it is an amazing city. Um, you'll have our lovely Pete, who's our um, one of our directors. He will actually come out for you and deliver your gin free of charge. But we can post them all. Right then. Are we ready to roll? Glass is on. It's official. Are we all there? Have we all got a drink? I reckon. I better put my specs on then, Joe. Yeah, get your specs on, your bin. Thanks so much. Love you too. Right. We we might be a young company, but the old bins aren't. (laughs) Right. So, round one, question one. What was the first distillery to open in London in the last 20 years. Oh, it's not 20, it's 200. I can't even read 200, remember. 200, I know, I know. What is the first new distillery to open in London in the last 200 years? And anyone that knows anything about the history of gin um, will know that it's it's been a bit of a long road that we've travelled um, to get to this stage. Oh, there's a little visual clue there, look. Yes. Anybody you might, you might have seen this on telly. And actually... A wonderful was, advert. Interesting fact about that, the swan, um, the reason why this company have used the swan, I believe, is because the neck of the um, of the still is actually called the swan, which is why oh. they've used that. Very clever. You can see it, look. You can see it, Susanna, in the background. Oh, yes, so I can. That's yeah. excellent. I'm peering forward, looking at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really good. So that was round one. Question one, what was the first new distillery to open in London in the last 200 years? Very good. Right then, on to question two. Yep. I think we should have a a little visual for this one. Oh, oh there he is. I do I love this one. boy. There he is. Now yeah. then, this was this was created to buy gin discreetly in the 18th century, mainly in London. Mm-hmm. Um, what is this ingenious little invention called? Well, I know the answer to that, so I shan't be saying it. But if you come into our shop um, on the pavement in York you will actually see one that we've had made. It isn't working at the moment, so it's just a mock-up. Um, but it is a very fine thing. And how, it is a very fine thing. How many times a day do we get asked if people can buy it? I know, I know. I'm wondering if it'll fit in my handbag one of these. Uh, I think it might not fit in your hand. Mind you, depends on your <laughs> handbag. I know your handbags, Joe. I'm definitely... It will, it will <laughs> fit in your full. <laughs> so, right, then. Question Over three. to you, my love. It is me. So... Hogarth's famous picture, Gin Lane, was drawn in 1751, but it's actually part of a pair. What I want to know is, what is the other picture called? Mm, I'll repeat the question. So Hogarth's famous picture, Gin Lane, is actually part of a pair, was drawn in 1751. What is the other picture called? And there's a great story which goes with that, which I will tell you when we read the answers out at the end of this round. Yeah. Do you remember going with um, with uh, the shop's manager, Sandy Tanner Smith, to see yeah. a load of Hogarths in London in, the, in that house? I do. It was amazing. Yeah. All those panels. Yeah, fantastic. It was a real... It, it, you can really see the history from his art, can't you? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And when we come to give the story, the story behind these pictures, I think I think everyone will have a small turtle, mm. won't they? Oh, next question, Mrs. Joe. Oh yeah, that's me. Yeah. Um, um, apparently, some people are posting their answers. I don't know if that's. Please don't do that. Don't we'll post give... your answers. Just we're going uh, to just give the them to yourselves, my lovelies. Yes, that's we are great. going to give the answers to each round, uh, um, sorry, to, to each round at the end of the round. So we'll give you a couple of minutes at the end of round one, yeah. and then we'll tell you what the answers are for round one before moving on to round two. That's it, that's it. Right slow. then, where are we? Oh, right, yeah, I like this one. Right, I think there's a picture to come with this one. Question four. Mm-hmm. Why did the British in India make gin and tonic their drink of choice? There ah. they are, look, having a rather splendid time oh, yeah. doing a G&T. Memsab. Well, I have to say, why wouldn't you make a G&T your drink of choice? Well, that's a good story behind this one, as you, as you well know. I do but, uh, know. Yes, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Excellent, excellent. I do so, like yes. a G&T at any time of day. 
In fact, <laughs> we sometimes call the grey lady, don't we call her our breakfast gin? Again, getting back to Sandy Tanner Smith, <laughs> I'm afraid. She calls it her morning gin. Yes, we're giving away the secrets there. I know. Right then, over to you for question five. Thank you very much. Now, this is a peasy, peasy, peasy easy one, and I really hope you all get this. Which ingredient is required for a drink to even be described as gin. And I think you're even going to get a visual clue for this as well. Oh, please, please. <laughs> what is the, which ingredient is required for a drink to be even described as gin? It's a blueberry. Yes, please, that was the answer. <laughs> right then, question six. All right. What is the minimum strength mm -hmm. of a navy strength gin? Have you got one there? Oh, I, I have got one actually. there. Got so one there. this is Sam for his twenty first. There we go. This is our now, navy strength gin. That's our lovely outlaw gin, which won double gold. It did at the international festival in San Francisco, which it means did. every single person on the panel gave it a gold medal. All now right. I'll give you. Oh, I can't give you a hint because she's taken me off stream. I was going to whiz the bottle around. Ah, yeah, sorry about that. Well, we'll just have to know it or not know it. Okay, so, what is Navy Strength Gin? Mm, well, mm. I know the answer, obviously. So <laughs> that's good. A yummy, I think, is one of the answers. Um, so, next question, question seven. What is a pink gin? What is a pink gin? Simple. Ask Princess Margaret. Ah, yes. If you're watching oh, The Crown. Joe, I'm loving The Crown with um, Helen. Oh, yeah, it's super. Great. I've just finished it. I've binged oh, a lot in the no, last few days. No. And it's, they're all changing. Are they not all changing again for the next series of The Crown? They must do, mustn't they? I think they must. I think they must. They've got so, a Diana now, I've seen. Oh, oh, yeah. Somebody I don't recognise, but yes, I will forward to that. Very interesting, very interesting. So what is... A oh, oh, sorry, it's me, Max, isn't it? I'm getting carried right. away there. Oh, madam, come along. Okie dokie, so question eight. Mm -hmm. um, which country mm -hmm. has the highest per capita mm -hmm. gin consumption? Right, it's not yours. And these are actually statistics that we've got from 2018, which are the most recent ones. Um when we first looked this question up, it was a different answer. So we it probably was. give you the other one if you get that. Yes. I think we will, when we do the answers, we will give that answer as well, just in case. I mean, you shouldn't be Googling anyway, people. You should know the answer. <laughs> so please have a good no, but, 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 but we'll, we'll give both. But there, there is one there is one more recent answer which has uh, surpassed the other one. So It has. Yeah, and I'm that's not surprised question eight. I was surprised by the first answer that came up, but I wasn't surprised by this answer. <laughs> Me too. I wasn't surprised by this answer at all. And if it was what city would it be? Would it be gin? Is and um, would it be gin? Is not York the city of gin? <laughs> Anybody who's been listening to Susanna on the radio this week, fantastic. She goes, and of course, York gin is the only gin in the city of gin. In the city of gin. Yes. So York is officially the city of gin. <laughs> Well, of course it is. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm all right with that. So, people, we're going to give you just a moment on those, um, and then we're going to go back and we're going to repeat the uh, we're going to repeat the question and then tell you the. I'll answer. just take this opportunity to have another little slurp. A little slurp. It yeah. was my birthday yesterday, so I'm. It still was happy birthday, Joe. Happy birthday, and happy actually, happy birthday to the other Joe me. in my family as well. Happy birthday to the other Joe in my family, whose uh, birthday is today. So there we go. Mm. Happy birthday, other Joe. Oh. Right then. Oh. Right, are we ready to go back? And I believe that uh, Siobhan and Rebecca are also watching us live. So that's Yay! a shout out for Siobhan and Rebecca. Very good. A little shout out to them. Absolutely. And everybody. Oh, and, Miss, and Mrs. Love is on. Hello, Love. Oh, the Love so from her. Heard. Oh, right. Are we ready with these answers? Yes, so I'm question ready. One. The question was. What was the first new distillery to open in London in the last 200 years? And the answer is there. It's Sipsmiths. And we have to all say a big thank you to Sipsmiths because, yes, round of applause. Yeah, round of applause for the NHS. Obviously, yes. much louder, but a slightly, sl slightly smaller, but definite for Sipsmiths. So the good news about Sipsmiths is they did loads and loads of the hard work for people like us at York Gin. It wasn't until 2008 
that the Gin Act of the 1700s was repealed. There were actually two acts in the 1700s. And it was uh, Sipsmiths that did all the hard work. Before that, we weren't allowed to be craft gin makers. We, um, it, was, it was down to the big few, and you know those names. You all know the names of those big few. And we weren't allowed to make craft gin. But now we are, thanks to Sipsmiths. So we have to say well, thank you. I have to say that I remember, I remember Emma and the other directors mm. going through all the rigmarole of getting this sorted out. And even with... Um, Sipsmith paving the way. My word, what a palaver it was! Oh, you know, it, it was a real, ca it was a real catch twenty two. If you can't do this, if you haven't got that, and you couldn't yeah. have that, you didn't have this. So it was like, anyway, here we are now. Two years. Here on, we are. Two with years all later. Award winning gins and well established as a fabulous, fabulous maker of gins. Hurrah! Absolutely. Question right two. I'll stop wittering and Go give on, you then. question two. Oh, a, I love this. Oh, part. we love this. Is our favourite thing. Yeah, there he is. And this is called the Puss and Mew. It is. It's actually the world's first vending machine. Oh, tell us because, more. Well, yeah, because gin wasn't, um, you weren't allowed to buy gin at the time. Yeah. It was all, uh, people were getting a little bit too drunk and a little bit out of hand. And so the government made it rather difficult for people to actually go and buy a bottle of gin. So what they would do was um, they'd go to one of these fabulous cat vending machines and they'd go, Puss. Puss, have you any gin? Ooh. And they'd put, and if if it mewed, they would put the penny in the, yeah. you put the penny in the cat's mouth, and you can see there on, on the side here, it's got a little spout in his yeah. paw, and the the gin seller would um, pour out the gin into your bottle, and off you'd go, oh, happy lovely. and probably meowing and purring as oh, you go. I would think purring is definitely of the answer. Oh, that's a lovely thing. And do come into the shop and see ours. We've yes. got a beautiful one. Um, and fa a fabulous social distancing that, of course, because you didn't know who was selling it to oh, you. Oh, that's the whole point. Nobody could get in trouble because it was anonymous. Oh, it's fabulous, fabulous perfect. all round. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Question three. Oh, and I've just noticed it's a shout out to the Lockwood family as well. Thank you Yay. for joining the Question three. Hogarth's famous picture, Gin Lane was drawn in 1751, but it is part of a pair. What is the other one called? Well, the just, other while you're, part. just while you're thinking about that, hello to Ali, Kirk Ali Kirkham. Oh, Ooh. hello, Ali Kirkham. So the other one is called Beer Street. And if we look at these pictures, actually, it wasn't alcohol that people, um, or the authorities or Hogarth had an issue with. It was actually gin itself. So if you look at Gin Lane, everyone's a bit skinny, everyone looks a bit ill, everyone doesn't look very well at all. But actually in Beer Street, everyone is sort of fat and happy, a bit like we all are eating everything and drinking everything at the moment at home. Um, so Beer Street was what you were supposed to be doing. So they wanted you to drink beer rather than gin because gin killed you because they put all sorts of rubbish in their gin. So that's right. right. Sorry, Joe, what are you saying? No, 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 I'm just agreeing. Just I'm nodding sagely. Nodding in the sagely, that's what we like to see. So Beer Street is how they wanted you to be. Gin Lane is what they did not wish at all. Indeed. No. Yeah, well, I've, just, I've, just had, I've just had a little message from Sandy Tanner-Smith. Oh, what is she saying? Oh, she's, we're, 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 we're getting our gins mixed up, according to her now. She says, oh, oh. Tom is her morning. Her morning oh, thing. please. We've been telling everyone it was Grey oh, Lady. No, Grey oh, Lady oh. is afternoon tea. Afternoon tea. An outlaw, oh, if you want an outlaw for a bad night out. Oh, <laughs> Just right. Becky, Just Man, Becky Man thinks we ought to get a Puss and Muse installed at home. I think yeah, so. Too. I actually go with that. Becky Man, that's a top idea. Well done, you. Right. Question four. Was that me? Yes, you. Yes, it is. Right. Why did the British in India make the gin and tonic their drink of choice? Because they well, were actually, sensible. Oh, these, as these poor blighters will show you, they were, they were drinking quinine because it was an anti malarial. Um, uh, liquid mm -hmm. so that so that these poor boys were drinking um without any gin so what actually happened was they were the people were adding gin to make the tonic taste better which is quite an unusual uh, way around but that's that's uh, how it was so the gin and tonic was actually literally medicinal medicinal i yeah. like the idea of that yeah, I, like I think i have that. a medicinal gene tea every day <laughs> <laughs> or several <laughs> All right. yeah, well, there'll be no malaria in your house, Susanna. No, 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 no. No mosquitoes on us, as they say. No, 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 no. <laughs> right, round one, question five. Now, please, if you didn't get this one, I'm very worried about you joining our gin quiz. 
which ingredient is required for a drink to even be described as gin? And there it is. It is juniper. 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 Actually, um, it's shortened from the oldish, older English word, Geneva, which is related to the French word. Go on, say it for us, Mrs. Genevieve. Genevieve. She's the one for languages, not me. Oh, I do like a language. Oh, she does. She does. And also from the Dutch word. Now, how are we going to say that one? Geneva. Yes, the one. But ultimately, it all comes from the Latin for juniper. So interesting question. So this is a question that comes up a lot. Is gin English or is it Dutch? Discuss. I think we'll claim it. I think we will definitely claim it. Because in actual fact, I know people always say it's Dutch. But... Um, the, quite the, a different drink, isn't it? It's though, quite it? a different drink. Yeah, it's yeah. more akin to whiskey than it is to our modern yeah. drinks. In fact, so, funnily enough, when we were doing the research for all of this, um, I read that the old Tom, which I don't have, I was about to show you, but I'd run out. Um, <laughs> old Tom, um, an old Tom type gin is is um, sometimes described as the missing link between oh. a uh, Geneva and um, oh. a London dry. Interesting. Yeah, fact. Interesting. Yes, interesting fact about an old Tom. That is very good. I like that a lot. Now, yes. coming to your favourite gin. Oh, yes. Number oh. six. So, right. The minimum strength of a navy strength gin. Mm -hmm. So, if you if you knew this, well done. It's 57%. And there's all kinds of stories that, that, oh. uh, that go back. Some of them are probably wildly apocryphal. But anyway. Um, tell us, tell us anyway. The naval officers were partly paid in gin. Mm -hmm. uh, and so... When they took it on board, um, the the gin inside the barrels had to be of mi minimum fifty seven percent. Otherwise, if it leaked onto the gunpowder, which was obviously essential, yeah, it, the gunpowder wouldn't light. Uh, but fifty seven uh, and over, yeah, the gunpowder would still light. Um, I also heard that the the um, the guys would test it before it came on board because they didn't want to be shortchanged. I can uh, I can believe that. And is that where the word proof can then comes from? Yes, so yes, absolutely. Ah, yes, so they were so actually they were giving it the proof of the gin. to the proof. Yeah, before so it I'll show the back of our outlaw bottle there. Just yeah, the proof. they didn't want any rubbish on board. So I'll yeah, and while we're while we're talking about a little bit of, of um, naval history and uh, yeah. fighting, yeah. Um, the, the term Dutch courage, actually, interestingly, comes from Geneva that we were talking about there, yeah. um, from the Anglo-Dutch Wars in the 17th century, because the boys would be given a Geneva oh. before going into battle, and it apparently gave them a bit of, you know... A bit of, a bit of bravado. A bit of bravado, <laughs> don't you know? <laughs> Cheers yeah. to the boys with their... Dutch <laughs> courage. Cheers to the Anglo-Dutch Wars of the 17th century. Oh. Right then, that over to you, my love. Now... An easy sounding question. What is a pink gin? Much loved by Princess Margaret in her time. Apparently. A pink gin is actually gin, Angostura bitters, and soda water, maybe, or just water. So there are a lot of pink gins around at the moment, or things calling themselves pink gin, but mostly it's because <clears> they've <throat> got fruit in them, a little bit like our Roman fruits here, which has beautiful hibiscus, raspberries, strawberries, blackberries, apples in there as well. But that's not a pink gin. A pink gin would be a classic gin, Angostura bitters, which gives it the pink and soda water. I didn't make that sound very exciting, did I? But it is an exciting drink. I used to like it. It's lovely. Like, I love it. I do. I used to like tonic just with some Angostura bitters, um, which would just be a pink. A pink. <laughs> When I was, oh, I'll have a pink, please. Sorry. I'll just have a pink when I was driving because actually it, it tastes a little bit like you're having a gin and tonic. Yeah, you can not. fool yourself. I know people that have a tonic water trying, trying to pretend they're having a gin and tonic. Not the same. It don't work for me. Not the same. Not the same. So I've got a lovely little quote for you here. So Sir Francis Chichester claimed his successful solo nav uh, circumnavigation of the globe was due to a daily pink gin. So gin, Good man. water, and Angostura bitters. He also said the saddest day of his nine-month and one-day voyage was inevitably the day the gin ran out. And I think we can all go <laughs> with him there. We're all with him. Oh, I, completely. I had a bit of a disaster like the, earlier in the week. I actually had no gin in my house. It was just like, what? Unheard of. So very luckily, we've got um, York Gin will just will deliver within the city of York. So we're like, yes. Yeah. So I think we're actually, no, no spoilers here, but I think we're going to see a little picture of our delivery man a little bit Ooh, later. So, I can see that Tom Tom Cranston's actually actually drinking one of those as you speak. 
Well, good. Uh, Tom, tell us what you're serving it with, because we love to know that. So um, I like to serve Roman fruits with a big handful of frozen berries and a lot of tonic water. Um, or actually, it actually goes quite well with lemonade. And now I know before you all send the tonic police at me that I know that's not strictly a thing, but it is a thing, actually. Roman fruits, lemonade and a handful well, of... Berries. You know what we say, don't we? Your gin, your way, really. Your, your way. I mean, I know our motto is history in the tasting, but yep. your gin, your way is up there too. It oh, is. I've just had a little message here from Richard Tanner-Smith. Excellent. Ah, but you can have your bitters left in or poured out, coating the glass. Oh. He learned, he learned that from a, a World War II RAF pilot. Oh, that's very, very, very interesting. interesting. I, I would always leave my bitters in because I quite... Yeah, well, I would leave them in, to be fair. I actually quite like them. I understand. I, I sort of get your thing. I get what you're saying there. Yeah, yeah. Top, 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 top. Right. Yeah, Question eight, stage. Right. Question eight. Which country has the highest per capita mm. gin consumption? Mm -hmm. And the answer is España. España. And anyone that's ever had a and t in Spain, you'll know they're quite heavy handed with oh, those. Oh, no, you go, oh, I'll have a Laredo and tonic, please. Not Laredo. <laughs> and they go. <laughs> so some of you might have the answer, the Philippines here. So um, bizarrely, I don't even know why the Philippines used to have... Um, the highest consumption but if you if you actually do google it don't do it yet because you're still in the middle of a quiz um but if you do google it philippines comes up a lot and we had to really check our dates so if philippines isn't even in that list i don't think um no which is quite bizarre because it went from being the top of the list to and not, not even on it. not even on there very 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 strange the philippines was definitely um the highest per capita for a long long time yeah yeah, yeah. mind you that, that we have to thank the spanish because they did actually give us copa didn't they oh, I'm right. thank goodness for them. well cheers to them cheers um yes and lee williams is saying does anyone just like their gins neat uh, so well i can tell them. you who likes their gins neatly it's Joe, she is a she loves neat gin. I like it as a shot. What I can know. I say? I know. It's a it's great digestif. It's a oh, I love it. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and jo and Joey Laverack thinks we're weirdos. Well, he's right. Then it's so <laughs> right back at you, Joey Laverack. So, <laughs> so that was the end of round one. You should oh, have yes. had eight answers there. So we'll just yes, give Larios. What did I say? So I said something stupid. It is Larios with, gin, that's what yes, I was meaning. It began with a love though, didn't it? I did mean Larios. I love Larios. I know. It's actually very fine. The only time in Spain, I have to say, that I was, I can't remember where, where I was. I think it was with my mum actually. And they were pouring this gin and I actually had to say, stop. Stop, enough already. What? Leave I, it out. No. I, I thought I needed to get to dinner that no, 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 It's no. an extraordinary gin I've ever had. It was fantastic. That I is a sight I would like to have seen. Right, before we go into round two, can yes, I just yes. have a big top up? You're having, are, you staying on, are you staying on the Grey Lady? Yes, I am, because it's all I've got. Oh. Well, right, Pete, you need to get down to the Can you see that, everyone? Can you see? I had oh. this done for Sam's birthday. He's just Does turned it say 21. No? It says bugger off mother. No, oh. Oh, I shouldn't have said that, should I? <laughs> Sam it says 20 Sam 21, look. Oh, you, you, that's you can get the bottles um, inscribed if you if you have a special event or a special occasion coming up. So oh. I did that one for Sam, so I can't open it. Yes, I think you, um, I think I got one for my birthday last year, and it says um, Susanna's gin pours off. Pours off. <laughs> pours off. Which is quite right. If you can see the way my lot go through the gin, I'm not having it. I'm not having it. <laughs> I know, we're as bad. I'm not having right, it. Right then. So round two, this is our York Gin Specialist Knowledge. We have, as you could probably tell, been giving out the answers to this all evening. So please, I hope you've been listening to our weird and wonderful rambles. So question one, round two, here we go. What is the York Gin motto? What is the York Gin motto? We've said it at least four times. So if you were listening, you will under, you'll know the answer. <laughs> what is the York Gin motto? Yeah. It's and don't don't worry if you aren't getting many of these right. It's just for fun. Oh, well, no, friend, I, went to, I went to college with Nikki Davis, so she's only got a couple right, three oh. right. Uh, so what? So you're, what? A you're a genius at languages, mate. Don't you worry about exactly. it. Exactly. Languages, languages are not my bag, are they, Joe? No. Yeah. <laughs> Good at English. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right then, question two. Yep. Ooh. Ooh. Name four of the five gins we make. And there's a little hint there and all the little colours. Now we've actually showed you them all. 
Oh, yes, we have. We've, been, we've been rambling along and we've actually showed you all of them. So um, have a good stab at that. And we've actually tasted all of them. <laughs> and we've drunk many of them. Many, 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 many of them. <laughs> Yes, I like that one. I like that. Annie Harrison says that our, our motto ought to be, I came, I saw, I drank. It should be. <laughs> it, it's actually... It's one of our details, actually, that's isn't the, it? That's the road. That is actually really the close. Road, the road the fruit. Oh, I've just given an answer. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. oh excuse me. Oh, oh, quick. Take quick. it Take it while you can. Right. Uh, that is one of our gins' mottos, because actually a lot of our gins have their own little mottos as well. My favourite... What's, what's, the, what's, the, what's the Latin? Oh, Any, oh Vidi... Oh, then they're all going to shout at us now because we don't know. Drinking. Dr yes, I came, I saw, I drank. It is, I came, I saw, I drank. I like this from Jessica Boyd, Venny Vidi Tipsy. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's really good, good. I like that. All right. And, and Frank, Frank Caldwell says, more gin, Vicar. More gin, always. always. Oh, you can, always have, a, you can have a cucumber sandwich oh. like they do for, what's that one that likes all the cucumber in it? Oodaboo. You know, the gin with the cucumber. Oh, oh, that's Hendrix. Hendrix. Hendrix, yes. They like it with funny teacups and things, don't they, and things. We've got, mm. we've got sets of those somewhere. I think we did. Right. Yeah, you got me one for my birthday last Question year. Three. Right, go on then. Three. Question, Question three. three. Oh, now look. Now this is a... Why give me the chemistry question, huh? Anyone that knows me knows science is definitely not my thing. Right. Question three. How many grams of juniper and how many grams of pepper do we use per run making York Gin London Dry, which is our classic York Gin. And there is a picture of Pete. Now, remember I was telling you. Hi, Pete. Hello, Pete. I'm sure he's watching. But if you live in the beautiful city of York, this is Pete, and he will bring you your gin, stand two metres from your front door, and leave it on your step. Um, and that he'll do all that for freebies. So um, he is a wonderful man, and call him now, as it were. Yeah, a good bit of social... social distancing there and yes, uh, definitely i'll just read that question again so how many grams of juniper and how many grams of pepper do we use per run making york gin london dry i didn't know this i did not know this and um it's quite staggering actually so there you go there and you go. lee williams tells us we should stay in and drink york gin we should definitely we are that's actually what we're doing yeah it is what we're doing isn't it <laughs> to be fair good one, lee. good one lee liking that exactly. right then exactly. uh, where good are we all. oh this is a really well i don't even don't even come up with silly answers for this one oh, I know where what is the york gin distillery in york joe <laughs> <laughs> where and don't say york <laughs> Funnily enough, it is in York, but we'd like you to be a little bit more precise, if that's all right. Um, yes, Claire, Claire Smallman, we will deliver to Cheshire, but by post, not in our van. I hope that answers your question. And Ooh. what is a run? Oh, yes, good point. That is a good point. Uh, a run would be um, however many bottles we make. So what, when I give you the answer to this, um, I'm going to talk about a small run, which is going to be our two-litre um, recipe still, which is a very, very small one. But actually, we make sort of hundreds of litres in our big still. We've got three different stills, I believe. Um, and actually, this is not a question, but I will give it to you as a little bonus question. If anybody <coughs> knows the name of our main still, anybody know the name of our biggest still? Um, yeah, so so are we, have we answered the question for AJ? And oh, what was AJ's and question? What is the run and how long yeah, is the I, run? I think so. So we're going to try and give it a yeah. Not scientific staff. Though. Yes, I know. And we're not very scientific. I'm sorry about um, that. I think Emma will, Emma will fill me in on that one. Oh, and I've got a shout out to Julie Gill as well. She's saying hi, so we'll give her a wave. Hi, Julie. <laughs> right. So. Yes, oh. Tony, we deliver to Kent. Yeah. As I say, by, by through post. We'll deliver anywhere. We can post our gin. We can anywhere. anywhere. We can go anywhere in the country. It has Absolutely. to be in the UK. And we'll be delighted to do so. Right. So, where is the York Distillery? You've done that one. So yeah. last but not least. Over to you, babe. Oh, no, this is a, this is a favourite one. So oh, it's my favorite. <laughs> I actually was going to give this as a clue in my little chit chat at the beginning, and I didn't. So I hope you hope you know your York gin. So what is the name of the York gin cat you can see on the York gin logo and on, on all the bottles, on every piece of merchandise, there is a little black cat that sits atop the castellations. Anybody know the name of the cat? 
Well. Rachel Good, it doesn't matter you don't know answers. Just enjoy yeah, your gin. It doesn't. Just have a gin. As long as you've got a gin, Rach, it's all right by us. Cheers. We'll have another little sip. Have you ever seen, I was going to say, have you ever seen that show? And I'm, we're trying desperately hard not to swear, but there is a <laughs> I did swear, didn't I? Did you? I didn't, yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, know this, dear listeners, women and viewers, we didn't listen. But have you ever seen the show Shit Face Shakespeare? Which is when they they actually do Shakespeare and drink at the same. Yeah, I saw it at the, I saw it at the um, Edinburgh Fringe. What did you, I mean? Were, were they? Because I'm a bit worried. Yeah, they were. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. a bit worried if we keep Quite drinking, funny. Here, we could we could be in a real trouble here. Someone's just put the answer up. Take it away immediately. You're not magical, you Mister so, no. no, Ali Kirkham, it's not cats. No, it's not oh, cats. Yeah. Not cats. Right. So, just re repeat that question. What is the name of the York Gin Pussycat? He's on our logo. He's on everything we do. And I will tell yes, you. We'll go through the answers. Why he's there? Who he is? And all about cats. Not the and why Emma drew not him. Kalali Kirkham. Just general cats. And why Emma drew him to be part of the logo right in exactly. the first place. Exactly. Well done, Emma. She's just a bit of a star on the whole. Is she right then. Absolutely right. Does um I think that's a very short round. So shall we just go back to question one, yeah. talk about it, and go through the answers? Yeah, let's do really. this now. So I said it loads of times. History in the tasting. Our York Gin motto is history in the tasting. I think I must have said it at least six times. I tried really hard to say it loads and loads of times. And we are history in the tasting. We're only a young company. There's no, we're only two years old. No, Joe and I are loads older than that. But actually, <laughs> York Gin is only two years old. And it is the brainchild of five directors um, who, were, who were friends who liked drinking. Well, that's the best sort of, that's the best sort of friend I like. That's how yes, it all came together in a pub, didn't it? Exactly, exactly. So we'll say cheers to all the directors. Cheers, the directors. Gin. Cheers. And yeah, long day. What? I'm with Diane Nuts. Time for another big sip. Time Cheers, for a Diane. Gulp. Diane, let's go for a gulp. Oh, God, that's right good. then. Next question. That's me. Come now, I'll, I'll try. Oh, no, actually, there may, be, there may be a picture that goes with this, so I won't try. Yes, there is a picture, so you don't okay. need to hold them up. Like, you don't need to do I don't need this. to struggle with bottles. That's okay, good. so left to right, we have, as you can see, um, York, York uh, Gin, our first our first ever, we call it the classic. We do. Um, York Gin Roman Fruit, mm -hmm. Outlaw, Old Tom, and Grey Lady. Oh, so there they all are. They've all there won they all massive are. surprises, apart from Grey Lady, as we said, and only because she hasn't actually been entered in anything yet. So that's exactly, funny. but she will be, and she will win loads of medals. <laughs> oh, for sure, she's oh. fab. Right then. Hope you got some of those or all of those right. The good news is my Fitbit's just said I've done 10,000 steps. So hurrah for me. No, you were going like this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's that old trick, isn't it? I actually haven't moved from this spot, but I've done loads of steps. So. It's, all those, it's all those blinking arm movements. Do you know what it is? And also, top tip, do some hoovering. That puts loads of steps on as well. Oh, I've done loads of hoovering. Do you know my house has never been so clean? I've never oh, really? known anything like it. Well, how do you find in the cats, though? Because the cats are just making such a mess. Cats are a menace. Cats are a menace. We love our pussy cats. We love, we do. We love our York Gin pussy cat as well, which we're going to tell you about in a minute. Right. We're going to go. Right then. Let's see if AJ <laughs> and Philip manage to get these right, knowing a bit of scientific uh, background. Go on then. No, it's you. Oh, is it me? York Gin 2. Question 3. Round question 2. Three. Round 2, question 3. No, I think it is it not. Oh God, hang on, come back, come back. I've got my paper. Yeah, it's round it's two, up. question three, it is, love. It is this thing about the juniper berries and the pepper. Now the answer is two thousand four hundred juniper to twenty four grams of pepper. So peppercorns are actually one percent of the botanical. So if you've got any other answer, because obviously it does depend on your, um, it does depend on your run. Um, but if it comes to 1% or we'll give or take, then we'll let you have that one. So it's interesting. When they were starting to make York Gin Classic, um, they did make it in a really, really small still, which is only two litres. But the difference between having one, uh, one peppercorn, two peppercorns or three peppercorns made an enormous difference. So um, gin with pepper in it, which is really common, people do put pepper in it, but pepper... Even one little peppercorn will make an enormous difference to your recipe. So just so it's small, but it's very powerful. Did I sound like yeah. some sort of chemist there? I you sound like you knew exactly what you're talking <laughs> about. 
my oh, darling, which is for that. quite extraordinary. It's there extraordinary. we go. <laughs> it's true. Right then, question yes. four. Yes. I'm sure a lot of you will have actually been there, so hopefully you will know the answer to this one. Where yes. is the York Gin Distillery? It's in York. In York. In York. <laughs> Where is it, Joe? So the answer is a Costa Malbis. It is. So yeah, it's about four miles from the Minster and just a mile a mile out to, out from Bishop Thorpe from the Archbishop's Palace. So and it's still yeah, within well within the boundary. Well within the city of gin there. The city of gin boundaries are still good. <laughs> That's good. York gin is all good. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. 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 That brings us to the last question. Question five in this round. What is the name of the York gin cat? Now I saw some naughty person put it up on the feed, but actually our cat is called Rutterkin. Yeah, and there's... he is a witch's cat. He is a familiar of the Bottesford witches. Um, and he, the name Rutterkin means swaggering gallant. Oh, he's very fine. And one of the pieces of witchcraft that these witches did was they bewitched the Earl of York and his family. So unfortunately, like many witches, poor old Rutterkin came to a bit of a sticky end. No, no we don't like to think about that. We don't like to think about that. But I believe these um, Bottesford witches are Margaret, Joan and Philippa Flower. Fine, fine ladies. It's a mother and two daughters. Um, and I think Rutterkin's in that picture as well. Now, today at York Gin, we can we we love we we are big cat lovers. Um, so what we do is if you we work with the Cats Protection League. So if you get a cat from York Cats Protection League, we actually give you a little bottle of York Gin to welcome your new family member home. Um, in our shop, we have a suitcase full of our empty bottles. People love our bottles. They're they're a really good solid shape. Um, they're fantastic for putting bottle lights. Why did you in. home in on me when she said solid shape? Oh, stop. Stop. The bottle is a solid shape. You can put bottle lights in there. You put candles, fresh flowers, all sorts of things. And, and actually, our empty bottles are very much in demand. So all we say is you're welcome to them. You're very, very welcome to them. But just give a little donation to the Cats Protection League. And we've got a little black cat who sits on our counter in the gin shop. Um, in York and basically he um, gets full a lot we've raised a lot of money for the Cats Protection League and long may we continue to do yeah. so yeah yeah oh. indeed we love the Cats Protection League we do we love, love the cats too we love dogs as well we've got someone dog, was in, dog what, coats what about the dogs well, of course we do of have a York dog of our very own we do Nico. We, we have, have York, and we, yeah. we like to see them all in their little dog coats with York we gin. We do. He's got well. his little York gin Aww. dog coat, and it's the cutest thing ever. And um, Debbie Conroy's dog also has one, and looks the cutest thing ever. Aww. All right. So that was the end of round two. So you should have got a mark right. out of five then. So, so far, you should have a mark out of 13. Okay. So, time for a little. A little, up. A little oh, should, <laughs> what are you having this time, Joe? Oh, same again. Not another grey lady. Oh, let me. Is it neat again? No, no, it's not neat. I've been very good. I've, I'm having fever tree light. Look, where is it? Very good. Other tonic waters are available, but fever tree. They are, is but we top. do like this one because it doesn't overpower the flavour of the doesn't. gin. Mm. So right, okay then. It's me that's starting this one, isn't it? Please so, do. It's a good who, round. We love this round. Round three. Who said? Mm. Right. Question one. Of all, I'm not going to do the accent because I'm a bit rubbish. Don't do the accents, it'll give it away. <laughs> oh, that's the wrong one. No, it is. It's the right one. Of all the gin joints. Of all the, yeah, but the, of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world. And she had to walk into mine. Who said Who that? said that? We'll take the actor or the character. Mm. Of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world. And she had to walk into mine. My husband will, will get this one, right? Exactly. He, he's a bit in love with her. Oh, I think they all are, to be honest. Yeah, right. no wonder. Question two. The gin and tonic has saved more Englishmen's lives and minds than all the doctors in the empire. The gin and tonic has saved more Englishmen's lives and minds than all the doctors in the empire. Who said that? <laughs> Kim Reed says, what about squirrels? Squirrels? <laughs> <laughs> I've got loads in my garden. You can have them. They're little stinkers. <laughs> they keep digging up my bulbs out of my baskets. Oh, and Deb Conroy is saying that Scooby loves his dog coat. Oh, he's the best dressed, best dressed doggy in Essex. Yay, Scooby! Yay, the envy of the Essex Terriers. Of course Ooh. he is. He's a proper Essex dog, that one. Tip top. Tip top. So right that's then. question two. Question three. 
Question three. A real gimlet is half gin and half roses lime. Uh, sorry, lime juice and mm. nothing else. Mm. A real gimlet is half gin and half roses lime juice and yes. nothing else. My mum would have agreed with that, by the way. Yeah. Emma's, Emma's gran. So who said she, that? She drank, she drank that. And can we take... So who drank... Who drank... I will take the, I'll take the author. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a bit of a clue. It's actually from a book, um, a famous detective novel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I'll take the author or the character. Okay. Brilliant. All right. Right then, over to you, love. Number four. I don't know what reception I'm at. Oh, that's not the one. That's not the one. That's not the one. Is. I don't know that's what the one. reception I'm at, but for God's sake, give me a gin and tonic. I think that, wasn't that us last week? It's some do we? Yeah. Before, yeah. All, before all, we had to stay home. I don't know what reception I'm at, but for God's sake, give me a gin and tonic. Who said that? Who said that? I like that. I like this round a lot. <laughs> right then, question five. Mm -hmm. Who said, I exercise strong self-control. Mm. I never drink anything stronger than gin before breakfast. Was that Sandy Tanner-Smith again? No, she, no, well, it could be. She like, oh, apparently an old Tom now in the morning. Oh, well, who yeah. you? Right, so this, uh, this is a multiple choice because it's quite a tough one. Was it? Yeah. Oscar Wilde. Mm-hmm. W.C. Fields. Yeah. Nigel Farage. Or Noel Coward. Mm. Mm. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. I've got a little hunch on that one, but you'll tell us the answers in a minute. So. I will tell you the answer That's indeed. It. And question six, the last one in this round. I like this one. I like to have a martini. Two at the very most. After three, I'm under the table. And after four, I'm under my host. <laughs> What's Top that? woman. Again, it's, it's um, oh, you've just given the clue there. So yeah, we know, it's, we know it's a woman because it's got all those, uh, it's got all those. Yeah. Multiple right. choice ladies. Yes, Dorothy Parker, Marilyn Monroe, Quentin Chris. <laughs> And May West. I'll read it again. I like to have a martini. Two at the very most. After three, I'm under the table. But after four, I'm under my host. Uh-huh. Ah. Uh-huh. Who said that? And that is the end of that round. So you have got Dorothy Parker, Marilyn Monroe, Quentin Crisp, or, uh, or May West. So that was six questions. So... We'll give you a little moment on those. We'll do another little cheers, Joe. Yep, yep, yep. Cheers, my love. Cheers, my dears. I'm look at me, very abstemious, me, still on my first. Oh, I've one. got a big fat one. I'm, I'm like raising love to Nicola Collins in Ireland. Oh, it's Nicola. Mm. It's gin o'clock in Ireland, too, apparently. Always gin o'clock in Ireland. It's always gin o'clock in York, more to the point. Mm. All righty. Have you had enough time on that, people? Are we all good? Yep, yep, yep. All righty, so let's go with the answers. Round three, question one. Who said? Oh, it's me. It's you. <laughs> mm. Mm. Of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world, yep. she had to walk into mine. So as you can see there, it was Humphrey Bogart, the wonderful bogey, Aww. as Rick Blaine in Casablanca. Oh. With... with who should have been Mrs. Heard, but hey, no, he, he missed out on that one. Too. Even you weren't born then, Joe. <laughs> Steady. <laughs> right then, question two. Question two. The gin and tonic has saved more Englishmen's lives and minds than all the doctors in the empire. Well, you've got a two to choose from there, but since we're discussing the empire, I think we'll go with Winston Churchill for that one, Winnie. There, he liked it, and I, I read another little story about Winston Churchill that he actually really liked a martini, um, but vermouth was very hard to come by, and he had own, his own little sort of special stash <clears throat> given to him by someone in France. I knew not who, um, but when he had a martini, he would tip his glass only gently, not to spill, obviously, but he would tip his glass towards France to thank the French for their vermouth. 
Mm, tip Ooh. top. Tip top. There you go. A little bit of added trivia for Winnie there. Tip top. Mm. Debbie Kirk, what gin shall I have next? Many, really. Oh, what have you got? So have As you, long as it's a York gin. As long as it have you tried an old Tom? Because actually, I've, I'm drinking classic. You're still the new grey lady. Try it all. Put some lovely. We know, it, we know it's my favourite. Right then, next question. Just a little wedge uh, of lemon. So, on, a real gimlet. Yep. It's half gin and half roses, lime juice, yeah. and nothing else. So, who said that? It was in The Long Goodbye, uh -huh. the um, fabulous detective story from uh, Raymond Chandler there. So you can have either Raymond Chandler or, if you know the story, yep. Terry Lennox. Oh, very good. Very yeah. good. There he is. He's quite dapper there with stuff. his pipe, isn't he? He's got his pipe. He's all sorry. That's Popeye you're doing. Oh, was that Popeye? Sorry. I'm Popeye. The same. No, no. <laughs> all right. Question. <laughs> Question four. <laughs> I think this is actually my favourite quote because it could apply to so many of us. Um, I don't know what reception I'm at, but for God's sake, give me a gin and <laughs> Oh, look, look at Dennis Thatcher there. He looks like he's either bored to death or he's had a one too many a gin and tonic. But he loved a gin and tonic. <laughs> did Mrs. T like a gin and tonic as well? I'm sure she probably did. But I think Dennis Oh, I'm sure before. she did. Yeah. So she's having a genteel champagne there. Though. Oh, yes. Well, you know, he's had the gin for her, I think. No, I reckon he's done a little kit. Like Looks like he's off to, off to bye bye land there, exactly. doesn't he? Right exactly. then, next question. Question five. I exercise strong self control. I never drink anything stronger than gin before yeah. breakfast. Why and our you? multiple choice was Oscar Wilde, yep. W.C. Fields, Nigel Farage, or Noel Coward. And the correct answer was? Oh, it was W.C. Fields. Fields. Yay! It was, he looks like he's had many a G&T there, to be honest. Yes, yes. perhaps not the most <laughs> battering of pictures. But anyway, there we go. Moving yes, on. Maybe on. not his best <laughs> angle. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe it was his best angle. I don't know. But, uh, but yes, it was definitely. Question six. Oh, bless. Now, look, last question in this round. And we've only got our bonus round, which is one question to go after this one. So question six. I love this as well. I like to have a martini. Two at the very most. After three, I'm under the table. And after four, I'm under my host. Was that me last week? Oh, no, it wasn't. Was it you? Who was oh. Well... I'll do On social again. lockdown and lockdown, woman. We had a multiple choice, and the correct answer was Dorothy Parker. I like to have a martini, two at the very most. After three, I'm under the table, and after four, I'm under my host. Mm. Isn't she beautiful? She's lovely. I love the way she's looking. Sort of, she looks quite ethereal, doesn't she? She could. I bet she's drinking Grey Lady. That's. I always find that's quite. Yeah, I'll bet. I'll bet. Don't worry, Ellie Stead. Doesn't matter if you don't get many rides. Oh, Ellie, in the gin. as long as you've got a gin in your hand, all oh, life is good. Don't you worry. Don't <laughs> worry. So that was a round out of six. So, so far, you should have answered 19 questions. So you should have a Nikki, lot. don't worry. Still only two. Oh, oh Nikki. Right. I don't know if we weren't, we weren't <laughs> we doing the, anyway. We did okay. the research, so. Yeah. Yeah, we did. We did do the research. You're drinking it. That's the correct answer. That is the correct answer. Look, mine's <laughs> nearly finished now. We're all going. It's all going to go downhill now. Luckily, there's only one. Okay, more right then. Left, and it it's our over to you for... question. It is over to me for question. question. So York is famous. Has a famous bar. It's called the Evil Eye. The big supporters of York Gin. We love them very much. Now, the Evil Eye holds the world record for the most number of different gins in one place at any one time. So the question is, how many gins did they have in to get that world record? Now, that's a little bit, you know, it could be, a ma it could be massive, it could be anything. But we will give you 25 either way for the point. So the question is, the Evil Eye Bar, which is great, uh, by the way, does brilliant cocktails, right? How many gins does it have in store when it broke the world record for the most different number of things <clears throat> in one place at any one time. I'm sure they've even probably got more now because they, they... And that's on top of the five best. Of, yeah, the five best are obviously, they have all of those. But um, so we'll give you 25 within either of that. So we'll just give you a little moment to sort of cogitate. Yeah, we're, giving Matthew, we're giving Matthew Lee a little drum roll here. Here we go, Matthew Lee. Three points so far. Matthew, we don't care, just drink up and enjoy. 
Excellent, excellent. And Flo, Flo Poskett says, the number of gins, not as many as Joe's house. Yeah, that's probably fair, to be honest, Flo. And no, shame on you. <laughs> Cheers, Flo. Mm. Right, so I'm going to give you the answer. Pam, Pam, it's a few more. Pam Bishop, a few more. Oh, yeah, more than that, Pam, more than that. Oh, that's very good answer. Yeah, tomorrow, Sarah. that's not, that's not that's, bad. I would go up by a couple. Josh Bates says, your... this is... <laughs> Debbie, we love you. Debbie Kirk, she has more gins than the evil eye. Tip top. Tip top, tip top. Right, so I'm going to give you the answer, people. I'm going to give you another 10 seconds. Many more than that, Richard Tanner-Smith. <laughs> and Dave Todd, no, no, um, uh, not quite Dave, as many, Nikki. Not Dave, quite as many. More. Many more. Many Ooh, more. Not bad, not more. Oh, Ooh, hey, this is very good. That's incredibly now. hot. Becky, uh, Becky Man, have you been, have you been, have you been in there and drunk them all? Yeah, what's going on? What's going Becky on? Becky Man has been in and had one of each. Right. Oh, that's not a bad answer. A few less, Josh. A few less. Right, okay. The answer actually is. Ooh. Jackie, more Jackie, more than my sister, a bit, a bit fewer. 26, so you can have 25 either way. So you can have between 999 and, oh, hang on a minute, that's not right. 25 either way is 1,001. So you've got 999 or 1051, isn't it? Oh, okay, that's the, that's the range we're going to give you. We're yeah. going to give you 999 to 1051. So anything within that, and you can have the points for that one. Oh, Josh, you were just a little bit out. One oh just slightly. Oh, Josh. Katie, you're in. Katie Amelia's in. Katie Amelia's in. Katie Amelia's in. Sam Hurd's in. Yeah, you oh, can no. have that yes. one. You no, can have one. No, so that was your that. bonus yeah. question, everyone. So that brings us to the end. A million. Not... Lee, Lee Williams, I love you, thinking it might be a million. Yeah, one million? million? We would love it to be one million. <laughs> oh, evil eye. They'd have to just have to, like, expand loads of shops to get one million jeans in. I think that's an excellent, excellent shout. That's a lot of gin today, Todd. It sure is. It sure is. There is a lot of gins. Oh, well, everybody, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining right, us for the York Gin Quiz. We've got the final few things to say. Now, we promised you right at the beginning that if you stayed with us all the way to the end, we would give you, we'd uh, put up on screen a discount code for you to get 10% off your online orders for this week. So there it is. 10% discount using the code FRIDAYGIN at yorkin.com please be over 18 and please be in the uk as much as we'd love to ship it abroad we're not doing that currently so please um be over 18 and the code will expire on the 11th of april so it's just a code for this week <coughs> now joe have you got the information for the next i week? have i Ooh. haven't got the one oh. yet but it's oh. we're working on it we're, we're working we're, on it we're getting so, a pin out we all um, promise if you, want, if you want to give the um remind the uh, yes i will so, nice people about the um, we, we will. yes we will so as we said this was a bit of fun it was just a way to kill an hour um on a on a beautiful Friday evening, actually. My husband's outside the garden <laughs> with a bottle of wine and the chimney are on. What is he like? Supporting his wife. Yeah. Um, so, And he has done the lawns. So we will actually, he has actually mowed the lawns while he was out there drinking his, whatever he was drinking. Um, anyway, they, um, we want to say a big thank you to everyone for joining us. We want to also say, it is a free, we, we've just loved doing it. Please though, um, so, St. Leonard's Hospice is a marvellous, marvellous organisation. If you can spare any form of, of money for them, there is a link page on our website and also on our Facebook page. Um, we can actually buy, if I show you, you can actually buy St. Leonard Hospice Gin. Now, that is our classic London dry gin. Um, and that, from that, it is £35. So it's actually slightly, it's a pound cheaper than our normal gin. And I think it's £3.50 from every bottle goes directly to... Um, St. Leonard's Hospice. So if you can. Yeah, a wonderful place. Yeah. Superb. Yeah. Are you oh, and we, ha oh, we have a winner. Oh, so our lucky winner, Joe, over to you. The lucky winner, literally generated by a complete load of random, literally random, is yep. Dave Todd. Dave Todd! <laughs> Dave Todd, you've been looking out because some, there's something lovely is coming your way really, really soon. Oh, that was quite <laughs> exciting, Joe. <laughs> All it lives is left for me to say is a few thank yous. So first of all, I want to thank uh, Joe for joining me and being my lovely co-host here today. To Emma, Simon, who are doing all the technical wizardry back there. For my lovely son, Will, who took this old technophobe and um, made me real on screen. And everybody at York Gin team, we all love you all. We all love you all. 
Um, thank you all for watching. Um, please, if you've liked it, tell us. If you've hated it, I'm really sorry. If but you've hated great, it, bugger off. Yeah. <laughs> it was a great way to spend an hour on a beautiful Friday evening. Thank you so much. And maybe we'll be back. If you liked us enough, we'll come back again. Thank you. Thank Goodbye. you. Take care. Bye. Keep drinking the gin. Bye. Drink your gin. Bye. Bye.